Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, March 10th. My goodness, how did it get to be March? It's March. Uh, cloudy, sprinkly, rainy day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. It rained a lot yesterday. Uh, such is life. Uh, but we've had some really nice weather lately. Uh, there was a polar vortex that was supposed to come through and get us some snow this weekend, which didn't happen. Uh, we stayed in the high 40s, low 50s, and uh, can't complain about that. So, anyway, here we are. Uh, and yeah, it's daylight savings time. I had that, that wonderful experience this morning of, of the alarm going off. I've got multiple alarms, um, just because I do. So my phone goes off, my uh, the Google Home thing goes off, and then I've got a digital clock, a uh, digital alarm clock. And of those, I have to reset the digital alarm clock manually. So I, I get up at, at 6, usually the alarm goes off. I'm like, jeez, it's time to get up. And I, I go and I'm turning the alarms off. And I look at the clock, and it says it's 5 o'clock. And I thought, oh, yeah, it's daylight savings time. I get to sleep an extra hour. No, wait a minute. No, that's not right. But, you know, at least once a year you get that, oh, I get an extra hour, and, and then the other, you got to make up for that. You got to pay the piper. So I want to talk more about daylight savings time and stuff, but I want to get uh, get a pipe loaded up here. So the tobacco of this, the week this week, which was chosen by the folks on the live stream on Friday night, is a jar of uh, Savinelli Brunello Flake from 2015. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, and I misspelled Brunello, which is interesting. Uh, anyway, this is this was a, a sample from 2015, so it's, it's got some age on it. This is still available. Uh, I was checking today, and uh, as you're going to hear, it's actually quite nice stuff. And I'm going to be smoking that in my olive wood pipe. This is uh, author shape from uh, Carl Olive Wood Piper, who makes some beautiful olive wood pipes and. These are really a, a unique experience. They're, uh, I think everybody should have an olive wood pipe, at least one. But let's, uh, let's get this loaded up. I'll tell you a bit about the tobacco as we go along. It is a flake, and let's go ahead and get some out here. Really pretty. Uh, it's a, it's a dom predominantly Virginia, and uh, this sample actually for being uh, almost 10 years old, is uh, really just about the perfect moisture level for me. So I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm holding it in my lap here. I can't really show you, but I just take a bit of this. I kind of roll it up, and in doing so, it kind of gets rubbed out. Compress it and drop that in the pipe, and that's how I deal with flakes 90% of the time. So I'm just going to go through with that process as I chat with you and forgive me for not looking at you but I don't want to knock the jar on the floor which would be tragic because this is good stuff and I don't want it going to the uh, humpback cricket and oh I gotta update you on the humpback cricket I apologize I, I have not <laughs> well first off I've been gone for a couple weeks and I appreciate you guys hanging with me in my absence. Uh, wife and I went on an adventure two weeks ago, and then last week I was sick. I had a cold and just chest cold. I couldn't even think about uh, smoking a pipe and just didn't feel like doing a video. And I don't think you would have liked it because it wouldn't have been very entertaining. So two weeks have gone by, and, and here I am. The cricket, I neglected to update you on. I did talk about it on the live stream, and I think I said something in a couple of comments, but I forgot to do an official update. If you recall, it's probably going back almost a month now. Uh, there was this really large, bizarre uh, cricket. Uh, some people call them sprickets. Uh, they're technically a uh, camelback cricket. They're big, they're spidery looking, and the son of a guns have the... Uh, the behavioral habit of when you, you know, poke at them or st stomp on the floor or something, most things run away. No, they jump at you. So, completely harmless, just creepy as all get out. So this thing was here on the floor. It wouldn't leave. I was spooked by it. Uh, I was thinking I was going to have to burn the house down. Uh, it was there for a couple days. It just hung around. 
And uh, one day I had some, <laughs> I was going through blends. I had this Latakia based blend that was very dry and I decided I was going to throw it away because I don't really like Latakia and I didn't have that much of it. And the cricket's sitting there and I took a pinch of it and I threw it at the cricket. <laughs> he just sat there. Uh, and then about an hour later he was gone and I haven't seen him since. So I threw a lot of key at him and he ran away. That's the end of the cricket story. Brunello Flake, let's get this lit up and I'll tell you about a bit about it. I left my Zippo upstairs. So I'm using my hippie lighter. Beautiful Bloodwood Tamper from Tamper Tantrum. Thank you, Jeff. I don't know if he currently has any tampers available, but I've, I've bought two or three tampers off of Jeff, and uh, I, I love them. I, I just, they're, they're just so unique, and he hand carves these. It's amazing. It's taken a little effort for me to get this going, not because there's, it's the tobacco's fault, but this lighter is dying. Hope I can get one more light out of it. There we go. Now we're burning. Oh, this is this is really nice stuff. So Brunello Flake is uh, predominantly a Virginia blend, and it seems to have a mix of both uh, dark and light Virginias. Uh, again, this has got uh, nine-ish years age on it. it was, I think it's May of 2015, so yeah, it's almost nine years. Um, But I don't get a lot of tartness out of the Virginias, not, not, none of that sharpness. It's very mellow. In addition to the Virginias, it's got Burley and what is described as a dash of Macedonian leaf. So it's got some Turkish Orientals of some sort in there. Now the Savinelli blends are blended by McBaron, I believe, and it does have a topping, and it's probably that sort of McBaron honeyish topping. But there's something really interesting in this blend. It was described by uh, my buddy Phil Rivera, I think, and Phil, forgive me if I'm misquoting you here. But I think he said it was like Orlick Golden Slice with an apricot topping, which sounds very good. Uh, and I get that. I, 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 I can taste that, what, what he's referring to in terms of the apricot. There's no topping listed on the, on the tin or in the tobacco description, but it definitely is topped. And what I think is happening here is you've got the the Virginias are, are, are a little bit citrusy and, and, and definitely sweet. And then you got that McBaron honeyish flavor going on. And then that sourness is coming in from the from the Orientals and it's somehow combining into what is a very fruity apricot like flavor. So Yeah, it's very unique. And I really like that sort of sourness that you get from the Orientals in this one. I checked this morning, it is still available. It's a Savinelli blend and it's Brunello Flake, so. If you like Virginia's with enough burly to you know, give you some depth. So it's 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 a substantial smoke. It's not uh, it's not like a light airy Virginia, and uh, 
unique flavor profile riding on top of that. It's been compared very fav favorably to Orlick Golden Slice. I haven't smoked Orlick Golden Slice in a very long time, so I don't know. Uh, I, can't, I can't make that comparison myself, but other folks say that it's very similar. And several have said it's better. Anyway, good stuff. So, daylight savings time. Other than the the, the, the annoyance of waking up and not knowing what time it is and having to go around and change clocks. I do still have clocks that need to be changed because uh, I'm, I'm old. And I like them. You know, a lot of people have been complaining and saying we don't need it anymore. It's an outmoded concept. Let's get rid of daylight savings time. Well, That's never going to happen because uh, <laughs> it would it would cause havoc. I mean, they would have to update so many systems. Uh, it, would, it would just it would be a mess. You know, like flight plans would be would be altered and the timing of flights and things like that. Yeah, just it would be a massive uh, mess if they if tomorrow. Congress said, okay, no more daylight savings time. So that's just not going to happen. But if it did, if it did, I would miss it. Um, as annoying as it can be, I like the ritualistic aspect of it. I like that twice a year, we all have to do something. Well, not all of us. There are some states that or weird, and I get that, but um, twice a year we, 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 we do this thing, we recognize time, we make an adjustment in, in time, and if you think about it, we're admitting at that moment when we make that adjustment that we're not in control. We don't control time and sunrise and sunset. In fact, we can't even come up with a system that can keep that kind of relatively constant for us. We have to make these adjustments. Same is true of, of the fact that this is a leap year. It's another recognition that the, the system that we've imposed, this concept of, of the calendar or the, the clock, we're imposing that on, on the universe and the universe doesn't care. <laughs> and it's just a reminder of that, that we're we think we understand things, but we don't. There's still a lot of mystery in the world. I like that. The whole concept of time is just something we've made up and imposed upon the, the world to try to make sense of it. It's, it's a yardstick that we use to measure something that we think is there, but we don't really know if it's there. You know, you can't... You can... You can quantify it in that you've got that yardstick and you can say, okay, this much has gone by, but is it really a thing? Or is it just the fact that we're creatures that experience the world in a causal fashion and therefore it seems to be moving? I don't know. I'm getting a little out of my depths here, but... It's interesting to think about. But I think the, the, the really important point here is that we're not, we're not as smart as we think we are. And we shouldn't lose sight of that because the minute we lose sight of that, we stop trying to be smarter. If we think we know it all, we don't recognize what we don't know. And that, that's not a good place to be. It's not a good place to be for an individual. It's definitely not a good place to be for a society. I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but the uh, sump pump just went off because we got a lot of water. A lot, a lot of water fell from the heavens. Yeah. Uh, what else is going on? So shop organization is actually going remarkably well. I'm well ahead of where I thought I'd be because I lost something. I had bought a tool. It's a mandrel for my lathe. Uh, I bought it on February 8th, 2023, and I know that because I couldn't find it, and I was so 
annoyed looking for it because I looked in all the places it should have been that I thought to myself, did I really buy this or did I imagine it? And I actually went and pulled up the, uh, the email from the order and, you know, the order confirmation and all that. And I had indeed bought it on February 8th, 2023. It came in. I said, oh boy, I've got this now. I'm going to use it soon. And then I got distracted into other things and I'm finally getting back to that. And it was nowhere to be found. So I had to start looking. And in looking, I started to organize and throw things away and all that. So I actually have... If you remember the old days when I used to sit at my workbench and I had the, the pegboard behind me, I got that whole bench all cleared off and uh, nicely organized now, which was, it was just a mess of stuff. Um, even back then it was, but it's become much, much worse over the years. So I'm happy. Uh, that's, that's a big start and it frees up some space to move some things into. I got the new shelf up. Still have a little bit of wall that I need to paint. We're, we're making progress. I'm pretty happy about that. So, I will probably do a bit more of that today. Not too much, I want to take it easy. We got all the uh, grocery stuff sort of done yesterday. Went out to Iron Hill Brewery for dinner. I had a my beer tastes have gotten so weird. I don't like IPAs. I, I just can't stand them. But they had this beer called Mangoverse. And I've been really into these mango beers. Uh, Phil Rivera got me started on this. Darn you, Phil. <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was listed as an IPA. And I thought, well... So I decided to try it. And good God, it was, it was a fantastic beer. Um, it was so complex because you, you you drink it and you got this mango flavor and then the the hops kind of came in. It wasn't overly hop, so it wasn't like one of those really ridiculous IPAs uh, that, that, that the kids like. But there was enough hops in there to sort of start to alter the complexity of that flavor and it had this really nice aftertaste. Uh, it, was, it was really good. I, I drank more of that than I should have. That was fun, but I think today is just going to basically be a take it easy kind of day. Uh, just uh, lay low and be ready for work tomorrow. So, a couple quick prayer requests, if you, if you don't mind. Um, <clears throat> our buddy Johnny Ford, Ford Smoking Pipes, uh, got in touch with me uh, and asked if uh, we would say some prayers for him and his brother Eddie. Uh, Eddie's gotten into some difficulty uh, by no fault of his own, but some folks have uh, have entered his life and caused trouble. And I don't know the details, but I don't need to know them. I know Johnny is a good man and uh, he, he knows his brother and his brother needs prayer. So if you can, please say a prayer for Eddie and for Johnny and uh, keep them in your thoughts. Uh, good men and uh, we need to we need to we need to take care of them so please uh, offer up a prayer for those guys and there's another person in the community who I will not name because they uh, they they did not ask me for this but I just like you to pray for someone that's going through some legal issues and uh, another good man that just needs some some prayer and needs to be uh, supported so please keep our friend our anonymous friend in your prayers, and our buddy uh, Johnny and his brother Eddie. So thank you for that. I, I do appreciate it. I I personally think that prayer is very powerful, and uh, I think even the atheist among us could admit that taking time out to think about someone else might in some way make the world a better place even without invoking the spooky stuff that you're so afraid of. Sorry, got to tease the atheist. So with that, folks, we will draw this chat to an end. It's been wonderful spending some time with you. Thank you for coming back after my absence. I do appreciate that you stick with me. 
I will finish up this uh, Brunello Flake, and I highly recommend, recommend Savinelli Brunello Flake, uh, which is available as of this morning, so hopefully it will continue to be so. I hope you have a fantastic Sunday, and you're looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.